right. So, I guess, well, let's do Scooby Chain Show. Perfect. So, hello, everybody. You know me, Shire. Not an alcoholic for real. Stop asking me. Um, so the purpose of this discussion is going to be fairly brief. Um, we've run through Fabricator. We know what it is. We have a general idea of how to use it. Yada, yada, yada. Now we're going to try to do like a quick run through of setting up a project, creating a task, putting some code up into review, and then landing it. Um, I'm basically just going to do everything right now from the beginning, right in front of you. So if things screw up, uh, it's possibly because something's misconfigured. But for the most part, the process should work without any issues. I fixed those two repositories last night. <laughs> I should actually set one of those up, so I'll do that instead, because I was about to use a remote repository. Um, so I guess I'll do that now. Let's do. Let's create a hosted repository. So um, I had originally set up this uh, SG test repo on GitHub, but instead we could go with this. So this is my SG test project. Currently, there are no open tasks. What we'll do is um, we'll head over into Diffusion and we'll create a new repository. Uh, normally, your repositories should be here already in the future when we actually have this set up. But for this purpose, we're going to create a hosted repository on uh, Fabricator right now. Which is a feature that many love to see, actually. So yeah. This, this is, I think this example is also perfect. It's, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah exactly. uh, now, now you want this, and you have to go through a process that and people have to agree, etc. Well, I mean, we'll probably still restrict repository to some sort of. So um, the name is not particularly important. It's just the human readable part of this. Um, this also applies to importing repositories. You define what you want to have your repository show up as in Diffusion. Um, and then the call sign is important because you're going to be using this for uh, essentially every commit will show up as lowercase r, then your call sign followed by the commit ID. This is great uh, because you'll end up being able to give uh, quick links to commits directly by doing something like this, R, S, G, L, T, uh, blah, 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 blah. And then that will automatically show up as a link wherever you post it in Fabricator. Um, so let's create this. Uh, anyone can push. Anyone can see it. Let's see what happens. Let's just create it. We don't need any special settings. So it is initializing. Let's refresh. <coughs> Boom. Done. So I will. Question is, how do we check out this repository now? Um, git clone. Uh, git clone will give you a weird message uh, about how you try to clone into a repository, but it won't let me do that. Right, but what's the uh, whole URL? Go to, uh, in the top bar, yeah. this is RSGLT. Run. Can you please sit here? The sure. mic. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, okay. So okay. in the top bar, you see RSGLT. Right. Uh -huh. If you click on RSGLT, like the middle breadcrumb. Where? Can we make uh -huh, it? There we go. Yeah. So the text. Yeah. 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 Better. Okay. Uh, there is a place where it will give you the. There is a place somewhere <laughs> where it will give you the the path. There is the. Path here, no. but there's no actual. Uh, there is a. Are you, are you in diffusion? I think diffusion. Right Try now. leaving the edit. Click on RSG. So let's do that. Let's go into diffusion. Because you're in the edit repository. Yeah. yeah. Right, but I had gone to the regular one, and it's not here. It just shows the call sign. But it's possibly because there is no. Uh, no, it should still show you a phone path. Okay. Let's. If you see. go to the. No, because even here it doesn't show anything. I don't know if this is going to work. Uh, it, is, it, it does work because there is a path that you can clone it. If you go back to edit, does it give you. Oh, hold on. Um, edit the repository. The defaults are not synced, is what the problem is. 
Uh, uh, um, or the fold is not actually hosted uh, or exposed either through uh, HTTP or SA. So scroll down and then click edit. Ah, uh, there it is. And then you have to and I'm going to say continue. Okay. It prompts you for this every single time. It's super annoying. <laughs> now you have to actually, yeah, exactly. Uh, the HTTP stuff went what? It's fine. Okay. So now, it's, uh, if you scroll down again, now it actually <laughs> says server, server essays read, right? So now that it's actually serving our essays, now if you go back where I tried to send you before, uh, it should actually show you. There you Perfect. Go. Brilliant. <laughs> Thank you, Ron. Okay. Your browser is hidden and not clonable, which okay. is not a same default, but whatever. This will be all going to be for you. <laughs> uh, all right, so. Uh, I recommend the essay one. The HTTP one doesn't it work. Well. Okay, because I thought we hadn't set up SSL on the server. Okay, yeah. so. Um, didn't get clone to clone. Yeah, yeah, I did it all the time. All right. Yes. So, <laughs> we have not. Uh, permission not. Oh, you need to add your SSH. Oh, so, increase the in general. Uh, yeah. You need to um, register your SSH key with Fabricator before you can clone things over SSH. So let's do that. Yep, it's up there. SSH public keys, public public key. And then. Uh, what do I do? Doesn't matter, something. Uh. uh. So there we go. We've now seen how to add your SSH key to Fabricator. It was pretty straightforward. Uh, and now. Boom. We've okay. created a repository. I'm going to hop into it now. Um, it is an entry repository. So yes. you will have to create an initial commit by just, just create a readme file and commit it. And now if you go to the repository page in Fabricator, it will actually show you that you made that as well. There we go. Excellent. So we have our one first commit. Beautiful. So you see here uh, the actual contents of the repository, the commit history, and the branch. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So um, by default, uh, when you create a repository, it's uh, pushable to all users, but you can change that. Right. Um, so now we have our basic setup here. Um, I'm going to edit this and assign it to my project. Now this repository will be considered a part of SGTest. Um, unfortunately, for some reason, there is no bi-directional view here. You don't actually see a list of repositories assigned to this project. But I assure you, it is. So we have our repository. We have our project. I am clearly a member of this project. Uh, now let's actually do a little bit of work. So the first thing you want to actually do with a, an empty repository, or any repository for that matter, is make it so that ARC actually works. Um, so we'll consider this an actual task. Make ARC. And self so I'll already assign it to myself. This is high priority. I assume it's one point. But I can put a description, but I've already told you what it is, so I'll just create the task. So now we have this. We have our task number T318. The next step is to actually do this work. So let's head on into our repository. We have, just to read me here. I thought I did. Here we go. Is that big enough? Bigger? There we go. 
That should be good. I think also in the video, it's not super high resolution. Uh, okay. Yeah, the video looks fine from here. All right. There. Massive text. Let's do there that. So, um, the actual file that you need here is called .arcconfig. Because otherwise, if you actually do anything here, Arc will tell you that you need to configure things. Um, so you can do it manually by creating an arc config file, uh, or you can do it through uh, arc set config. Um, so I'll do it manually because I just want to commit the file and put it through the whole process. Um, incidentally, once you have the arc config file, you can use arc. So you can actually use arc to do a code review of adding arc. Yeah. It's very meta. So let's do that. Yeah. Here it is, same thing with Arc. So uh, the first need is the what is it? Conduit URI. Uh, one magical day in the future that will be over SSL. Uh, and the other is let's see here. You don't. You can use the. Um, you can use Arc because I want to create the file and then manually put the file through Arc Diff. Same thing with your right now with the .eu file where what happens in Rack is people just copy it from another repository and like the same. When you create the repository. It would be nice because otherwise it's going to be something that people trip over again and again and again. So it would be nice both for that and, ah. and because the uh, zombies stay into your repositories. Oh, so, that's good. So. Right. So this file can actually have a lot more parameters. Uh, you can check them out on uh, the Arcanist docs. But we're just following the Arcanist Quick Start Guide, which basically just applies a conduit URI and a project ID. Nothing else, nothing too crazy. So we'll save this file. And I think it says the project ID is optional, right? Is it? I think it's able to auto attach in, in some cases, but it's whatever. So we have this one file. Message that contain. Um, I prefer to do it with the task at the beginning because it makes the most sense. Uh, and I'm just going So now we have in our local history this uh, this commit to create arc config. The next step is to do arc diff. Essentially, runs through your local history and sees what you've done. Um, and in this case, we just have one commit. It's loaded up arc. This is essentially um, creating a differential manually. You can also do it through the web interface. But in this scenario, we'll create a, a little bit of info of what we've done here. So our summary is that we added our test plan, none. Reviewers. Unfortunately, uh, I'm the only person in my project. But for fun, uh, I'm going to add QGIL. Oh, no, not me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in front of my laptop. It's OK. I'll, 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 I'll drop uh, your laptop. He can actually, OK, perfect. Uh, and then you can add other subscribers, uh, not necessarily people who you want to be reviewers, but people who might be interested in your um, differential. So if all into Metso, um, there is an open task about not requiring the test plan to be non-MT because there is an annoying thing that it turns out to be configurable, where all those fields you can leave empty, and Arc will complain, but you can dismiss those complaints. But test plan is not something that you can dismiss. Right. Which apparently is configurable, so we can figure out how to do it. Also, you cannot add yourself as a reviewer, and you cannot self-review changes in Arc. Correct. So this is one major uh, caveat from Garrett, where right now you can plus two your own patches. Um, you can't in Fabricator. Um, on one hand, it makes sense, but on the other, it's very different from our current process. So we will eventually, I suppose, fix yeah. that to um, support that. 
you also cannot vote on a change unless um, you have first made yourself a reviewer, which uh, makes it kind of a two-step process. I'm sure we can iron some of this kind of stuff out, but that's sort of what I've started for. Right. So I think that's pretty much it. We're not going to add any subscribers. Uh, we'll just save this, and Arc will put it up. It says it's running unit tests, but there really aren't any. So it says no unit tests. Um, and that's it. So it went up, and it gave you a revision URI. We can follow this, or we can refresh this task. And clearly, it did not work. <laughs> um, you probably need to get rid of workflow equals create. In the no, it failed to actually assign it. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. Yeah. So it created our. Uh, it seems to be. It's just like the interface becomes really weird, but okay. So. Um, I gotta say this is perfect. There, that's a lot better. So uh, now here we are on our patch. We can scroll down. We can see what the actual changes are. This file was added, so there's nothing here to compare to. This is a pretty simple, straightforward diff. Um, we can see here that it's actually not assigned to any tasks. Um, normally, it's supposed to parse this out and use that to assign the task automatically to it. But perhaps I've done something wrong, or I'm different. Uh, Maybe it has to go into suffering, not the title. That's possible. But uh, what we'll do instead is we'll just manually add this. And this is my task right here. Make arc work, T13318. Uh, and we'll save this task. So now you can see manifest tasks have shown up with this one. You can assign uh, multiple tasks to a given diff. But in this case, this is the only one that we need. Um, all this other information is great. Uh, we see that uh, Kim was added to this as a review, but he hasn't done anything. So he shows up as an empty circle. He is lazy. This is the icon for lazy people, for future <laughs> reference. Um, yeah, so it, it's pretty straightforward. What we'll do is we will wait for someone to review yeah. this. I'm trying to join the thing so that I can broadcast my screen with you, guess. OK. Um, so hopefully Google Hangouts will let me at some point. I invited myself to the Hangouts. But... Okay. Yeah. And the link is in there. Just a TMZ. Perfect. Thank you. So. Uh, we'll run through the uh, other parts of this. As you can see, I, as the author of this, in this uh, list right here, cannot actually approve this change. All I can do is I can abandon it, I can plan further changes, or I can add reviewers or CCs. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Plan changes basically says uh, it preemptively uh, sets your revision to not approved. So you could essentially say, yes, I have a diff up. Uh, it's not ready to go live. Okay. You can come take a look at it, but I'm planning for the changes. How do you do the right. Um, I, exactly. So it's like you could, the normal way of doing things in the past would have been just add a comment. Uh, I'm going my entire team. But someone else might have already come in, and they might want to suggest that. But instead, by saying <laughs> plan changes, <laughs> Now they know I'm going to kill my team. So this lets people know that, OK, more things are happening. I don't necessarily need to approve it. Um, so I was right by not taking any action. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so the next, sorry, go ahead. Coming at inline comments? Inline comments, yes. So, so the, uh, yeah. you can actually just click on a line here or multiple lines, for that matter. Um, and there's inline comments. You can reply. You can add images. In this case, you should use SSL. So again, uh, and I, we went through this in the last presentation. Keep in mind that it does say not submitted yet. Um, Same as Gary, it's a draft. Right. Uh, so these are drafts. You need to actually go down and hit submit here. 
Uh, and you can add to actually go along with this if you want, but it's not mandatory. Uh, in this case, we will, and we'll submit it. So we see we, I had my comment here, and it shows what inline comments I added and where. Um, when there's multiple revisions, uh, these links will actually take you to that specific uh, ID, like this. By following this, you'll see uh, this ID and uh, this comment. Once we create a new version of this, that, uh, these comments will disappear because it's in the previous version. It's, again, similar to Garrett. Uh, for fun, we'll modify this file. And uh, now I've created some changes and I need to commit them. Uh, in the past, you might put uh, amend to your changes. The normal workflow with Jared would be to amend. Uh, in this case, what we'll do is we'll say git commit. Um, making stupid. Now, in this case, arc knows that we actually already have a differential. So arc diff normally just tries to auto detect what you're doing. Uh, in this scenario, it knows that we're updating because we've already done this before in this uh, current patch. Um, so now you have the option to kind of create a comment uh, for your revision. That will actually show up uh, in this history here. So it automatically puts the commit that you put. And if you have multiple commits, they show up in a list like that. But in this case, I will uh, just say this. So it's gone. It's still the same revision. Uh, but now if we refresh this, that status was all automatically cleared once we created a, an update to this uh, diff. And if we scroll down, we see that I updated this revision to diff 93. And the history appears here. Um, now my comment is gone. However, um, <coughs> similar to the interface with uh, wiki diffs, you can just pick this, show diff, and our old comments appear here, and exactly what changed. Uh, pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, I find this is a lot more intuitive and clean than the way it currently is in Garrett. Um, and it's one of the better features of Arc. Do you want to demonstrate a comment here next? Uh, we I could actually. So I can, I can go. Um, I can actually switch over to my screen right now, and I can go. Have you cloned out the? Yep. Uh, I've okay. done the whole thing. Perfect. Well, not, I'm pulling your repository, not your change because I wanted to display that. As well. Perfect. So we've done all our changes. Normally, what I would do at this point is I would wait for someone to approve it, but okay. instead, what will happen is Rowan will come in and commandeer my patch. Uh, he'll remove my test line, yep. and then. <laughs> I can actually approve his change. So right now, I can't do anything. So I'm going to wait for yeah. Roland to pop in and take so over. So when I do this, the mm -hmm. screen should. Oh, is, is Shayard the one projecting? I'm currently the one projecting. Oh, so, so what I'll do is I'll go to this. Hang out. Actually, we could uh, just just give me the the projector. It should work. Whoa. Whoa. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's it. Yeah. Ooh, okay, that's not the one. So how do I am supposed to find my artists? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. So at least now you're seeing this. Okay. 
Okay, um, so I am on the page for Sarah's change, and down here, uh, okay, it's going to be a pain in the butt. I think I should just project from my laptop instead, which I have a little tool for. Okay. Slowly but surely, we're getting there, guys. Yeah. I just hope this is not is a DVI and IPGA, right? It's VGA. It's VGA. Okay, then I'm screwed. Never mind. Um, we're just going to deal with things being slow. So I can actually view a diff between patch sets here. And the, here I can see what Shayar did um, between number one and number two. Why, why cannot you just... Uh, but I have a, I have a, a no, thing I mean, to... Why can you not work just from your laptop? What do you mean? Just, uh, I don't know why you have to keep looking at... Okay. Oh, I'm just looking at how far behind it is. The projector is behind because it's going via the Hangout. Okay. Oh. Never mind. Um, okay, so I'm going to I'm going to complain to Shayar that he. Okay. Uh, Top five website guys. <laughs> How do I? So I'm going to complain about this. So I'm going to complain about this thing. I'm going to request that he change it. So now it shows me over here as. No, no. <laughs> you, you know, you didn't want this because. Okay. If you go back. No, no. You. I knew you shouldn't touch this. Gosh. Well, guys, uh, oh, your exit full screen, press F11. Okay, so yeah, again. There you go. I, I'm really amazed that we can scale things to hundreds of millions of users, but we can't even do a presentation properly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you try to the game on the screen? Is that true? Whatever. <coughs> I'll just full screen. That'll make things a little bit better. So what'd you just do, Ron? Okay, so I just. Uh, submitted an inline. I just went and viewed the diff between patch set one and patch set two, um, the same way as you can get uh, as you can do in Garrix. I saw his inline comment from one that said why he was changing what he was changing, and then I left a comment saying, "Tests really come on." Um, so it now actually says that I requested the changes here. Um, so he wasn't there previously, and now he's popped into the list of reviewers. Yep, right. he didn't have me as a reviewer. So just to show you the diff again that I was viewing previously, I. You have this like uh, MediaWiki style uh, radio button stack here, and then the patch set diff shows you this that I said. Test data, really. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to commandeer's change. So I've gone on vacation now. Yeah, Shodar is like on a plane or whatever, or he's slacking off, and I'm like, come on, dude. Um, so I'm just going to take over his change. So now I'm the owner, and Shodar is a reviewer now. So it immediately switched us. Yeah. So now there's a command here, arc patch d43, that I can run to download this patch. This is like the equivalent of give review d. Uh, and I guess I haven't actually installed arc, so forgive me while I use. Um, can you increase funds? Uh, sure. Okay. Yeah, it's all right. Um, I have installed my fabricator thing in kind of a weird way, so I have to um, actually run ARC from a weird path. But just imagine that this is just ARC. Uh, and it's D43, I think. Just You're not sharing the same terminal now. What happened? Oh, nothing, nothing. Oh, it's just very, very far behind. Um, Oh, hold on. Um, 
I don't have the archive file yet. That's why it doesn't work. That's true. Um, um, we have a bootstrapping problem here. So yeah, the uh, downside to using Arc to set up Arc is that no one else can actually patch it because they don't have an Arc config. Yeah. So how about I uh, <laughs> take over here? It's it's all right. I can pass the conduit URI. Okay. Was it D43? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's giving me error messages. Um, no, because it's uh, D43 is the the command after Arc diff would be the commit. Oh. Key. Yeah, that's so what I did. So instead, what you want is, I think, arc diff. Arc diff this, and then the, and then. D43. I think it's arc patch d43. Oh, of course, it's arc patch. I am more on. Yeah. Okay. So normally this is easier, um, but now um, you can see that I have his change. And it like has his stuff and everything. So I'm going to add it, the file and remove the test line. Now, one important thing to note is you'll see that that commit message that showed up in his log is entirely different from my commit message in my log. Um, what happens is every time you update uh, a diff, whether it's otherwise, uh, this commit message could change. So for example, I became a reviewer, it, we added a task to it, uh, and it has a differential revision URL, all this fun stuff. Um, if you were to uh, want to update your local Git uh, log with this new information, you would run git amend, sorry, arc amend. Arc amend will essentially update your current commit messages to whatever is in uh, differential at that moment. So that means that every time I add a review or whatever, the hash of the commit changes. Right, but you don't have to do it because it's not necessary. Right. When you later on land it, uh, when it does arc land, it will automatically arc amend before mm -hmm. landing the changes into okay. the master branch. That is potentially very confusing, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> okay, so I've now made this change. I've, reviewed, I've removed this uh, thing again. So I'm going to just create a new commit, right? That's right. Arcanist. It's the git review if I understand correctly. Yeah. And then I just want to do a arcdiff. Oh, and I don't need the conduit URI anymore because the no. file is there now. Uh, it gives me some initial set of questions. You just see it. Yeah. Along with that. <coughs> and I can I can change my comments here, but I'm just gonna leave these. Okay. So now um, you will see that um, this revision is no longer blocked. It is owned by me, and you can now actually see that there are three revisions. And if I'm not mistaken, the diff between one and three should be nothing. Correct. So that's right. Now I'll so now we'll give it back to Shai. So, so I refresh this. Back to you. Perfect. So, so if, if I refresh this, this now we'll see that I've got, got his, his latest patches, patches and all his commits, commits and everything. Um, now, now what's happening is the URL. URL I was already, I was already doing, doing here, so, so you'll see you'll here see what you're already doing, doing, but instead I can just uh, click up here and reset all the parameters back to default and just see the latest version. This, this all looks, looks pretty good to me. I can, can just accept these changes. That's, That's it. it. So now we can see on top that the status is changed and accepted. Uh, uh, at, at this point, he is now able, able to our plan. However, um, he doesn't actually do it. Uh, anyone can our plan at this point. Uh, there's more granular <laughs> permission settings to do this, but, but our plan by itself, itself within, within your, your uh, 
uh, uh, current, current branch that you've been using Arc in, will automatically, automatically figure out what you're trying to land because, because it knows the revisions and how it will automatically update D43 uh, when we get Arc in. But, but without, without even having that, that, you could just run, run this command that Arc land, land, land Arc patch D43. And, and that will specifically um, do this online. You'll download it, and you'll uh, merge it into Master. Merge it and then it will close this whole task. So we can run this. Um, um. Oh, great. Because oh, you, you have to patch it first. Patch it first. Oh, you have to patch it first. Yeah. First. yeah. Um, um. Let's see. I think I might have to do yeah. it again. This is a fun way it was. It was. And and we're going to patch this, except I fucked that up. Uh, and uh, and now I can land. Arc land. Uh, I can't do it. URI equals. No, uh, it's dash URI. No, it's dash URI. Oh. All right. All right. Your, this is your, your laptop is done. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you have to archive it first. I did. did. No, you did yeah, because you didn't pass. Um, oh, okay. you're right. You're right. So run that command instead of patch. Is that it? Is it? Does good show think it is? Yeah. One time. Let's see, that's an old version. What was an old version? No, it's uh, Yeah, you're right. So the rest, yeah, yeah. Okay. that's it. Uh, let me try to argue. Yeah, yeah okay. okay. So, so let Rome take over. Uh, you have to. Okay. But, but wouldn't arc land okay. and then the uh, arc dash branch try to land it on that branch instead of master? Uh, it's configurable by you. Um, in our case, it lands it into master because that's where we were working. Uh, you can specifically tell it to land into uh, and compare a different branch. Um, when you do, I believe, uh, the second uh, the actual parameter that comes after that would be the branch you want to put it into. So you can put like origin master, which it is by default. Uh, I don't know if you noticed when he was setting up arc initially, it asked him what he wanted to use by default. And the default is origin master. Um, so instead, what you would do is uh, arc diff followed by whatever branch you wanted it to go into. It's already done on my laptop. It, it'll be um, the screen I, I have a quick question. Does it mean that the actual merging to master happens on the local, <laughs> on your yes. desktop? And then you push it back to yep. the app, uh, to the point <coughs> that all the examiners? Correct. Actually, you, no, you push it directly into the Git server. Wow. Look, master arrow master in the output there. Oh, you get a push. Okay. Yeah, it actually did a real get push. So um, there is there is no separation between um, being able to land something and being able to push in arbitrary changes bypassing code review. Um, so this is where your this is where your conventions by the client side now deserve. Yeah. So if I what's what's even funnier is I can try to arc land the change that's not been approved. And it will warn me. It will say, this change is not approved. Are you sure you want to do this? Um, but if I say yes, I'll just go and push it in anyway. Because if I have push, if I have push permissions, I can just push them whatever the hell I want. So yeah. we just have to remove push permission from any of the If you I want to do the same thing that we do. that we set it up is that. Actually, well, I mean, you could you could have a change that's accepted, but no one can land it, right? And so only Jenkins can land it, so that's still yeah, fine. Yeah. yeah. Either way, it's a matter of implementation as opposed to uh, the flow in which we actually use it. Uh, it shouldn't change the way we do any of this stuff. Um, the yeah. workflow, sorry, the workflow seems to be very very similar. To what it is very similar. Um, yeah. I trust Fabricator to be. Tweaking 
to make it match match of the workflow. Uh, define matching your current workflow. Uh, the workflow where people, we need trusted people to approve change, which was what you were demoing. Like you have people right. approving the change. Right. And that's very, we need that feature. Yeah. We need people to approve and stamp it for production. Another thing we need to do is making sure that the tests are passing before yeah. ending the change in the master branch. And that seems to be possible there. It is. And it's also possible to do it locally. Um, Arc will, it can be configured to run unit tests and linters. So even before being able to submit the patch at all, it runs them locally, uh, or rather remotely. And then uh, if those fail, it tells you, sorry, you need to fix it so that it passes the linter or the unit test before submitting your patch. That prevents a lot of cruft from entering Arc, uh, sorry, entering Fabricator, rather. Um, Linters can also be um, configured to amend the change automatically or to propose amendments and change locally. Yeah. So for very simple things where the linear error message basically just tells you do this instead, um, you can write the linear in such a way that it comes up with a diff saying, I would like to change your weight and change it this way, yes or no. Which that all requires work to set it up, but it's potentially very nice. Yeah. Uh, and that's it for the most part. So, um, so anyone was trying to say something there? Anyone? Yeah, so, uh, so you said it runs the test locally, but then it changes the music you mean you run it remotely, the test before you submit um, it. Yeah, I, I don't mean submit as in like when you approve it, but when you initially submit a patch and yeah. then propose change. You said it runs it like into a staging area fabricator, like when you get the test and see if it has. No, no. It creates change that publicly, is that what you're saying? No, it's when you, when you run ARC, it um, by default will automatically run the, the tests and run some stuff. Um, if there are things that can be automatically corrected in your change, it will correct them. Um, is, that, is that completely online? Yes, that's all. Right. Local, you can bypasses, of course. Bypasses, of course. Sure. So it'll say like your change doesn't matter, doesn't uh, pass this. Are you sure you want to submit this? And say yes. Um, you have to configure all this crap by default. There's nothing configured. Um, but then when the change is uploaded, you can actually see there which is lint and units, and it has like grayed out stars. Sure, but that's it will actually show like green things to to show that the user ran test locally. Okay, so that's not the thing that Jacob's talking That's the one that you can yeah. Um, yeah, every time you upload, um, because you upload with Arc, Arc knows whether you, um, excuse me. Sure, but that's fine. That's what you can see. Yeah, yeah. And it's bypassable. Okay. okay. But you will know when it's like a five minutes over. Sorry. Do you want to adapt to your company? Or the actual user version of the computer Jacob's talking about. But it doesn't have a place to yeah, that's a good point. So uh, what you're saying is like that those two fields are well populated by Arkins, not by Jenkins. Yes, right. Or whatever, whatever it is. And it'd be nice to have a place on that field for a Jenkins. So we are sold here, which is that when you go to someone at all the change, right, they you have the way to send some kind of notification of Jenkins. Jenkins running all the tests, which we recover that. This is your test result. And then we can do our amend. Put that list in the commit message and send that out. Thank you. So the very first like a transition of the study of the very top of the chat and check it to the end of the year. Uh thank you. Oh, um I've I've been torturing uh fabricated with dependent changes. Um it's not very well supported yet. Um so, so yes, yes, exactly. exactly. By, so by default, default what it does is if you have a change on top of each other, it will do what we are doing. We'll just combine them all into one change. Um, when you we land the change, you're going to choose to have all of the next lines separately or squash them. Oh, that's a land time decision. Um, if you want to have an actual separate change, it's possible, but you need to ask if you want to do this or if And if you do it wrong once, you get into trouble, it's kind of Icky, and we have to still, that probably still has to be ironed out. The worst thing, in my opinion, is that um, there is no uh, visual treatment of it in Fabricator at all. So, um, except for one exception, which you might have mentioned. So, when you 
when you run our patch and you download a change, it does actually know to download the dependent changes with it. So that all like works, and if you land one, it will complain saying like one of the dependent changes is improved. So it knows about all of that, but it's not visualized at all in the user interface, except for a, a more generic feature. It's actually a really nice feature, which lists um, changes that touch the same files. Mm -hmm. So if, you, if your change touches a file and there's another pending change that touches the same file, it will flag it as a potentially conflicting change. Sure, cool. um, so that may also list dependent changes, but it doesn't say in which direction dependency is. It doesn't say anything. I file a task about that. Would you consider better support for that to be Walker? I think so. I think so. I'm not sure whether I would declare it a blocker, but I think it's very important. Yeah. Uh, I investigated it too. Um, I haven't actually tried Cherry. So um, su supporting multiple branches in general doesn't seem to be very well done. Not as well as Garrett. Um, but maybe there are configuration options that I've missed. Um, the art config file format is almost entirely undocumented. So um, uh, actually, it's, it's even worse. The documentation claims that this documentation exists, but I can't find it anywhere. Um, so. It's entirely possible that this is like configurable similar to the way that Gary does, but it's just not documented anywhere. Um, and I'm not sure the thought has been given to maintaining multiple mainline branches that are potentially not called master. Um, uh, I haven't tried to do cherry picks yet. I don't know how well it deals with those. I think probably reasonably well. There is no there is no generate cherry pick to make button like in Garrett, which which I think is probably almost a blocker for uh, migration. Um, there also isn't a generate revert commit button. There isn't uh, uh, what is the third generation one. There isn't a generate rebase button. All the kind of like commit generation stuff that Garrett's implemented recently doesn't exist in Fabricate. Um, how about the draft commit? Shayar, draft commits? Question mark. Draft commits? Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I, my computer crashed. What was the question? You've been trying to use plan changes, basically. Mm -hmm. If you're you're still working on it, right? There's a plan change. It's kind of like, I think, it's like a self optimized one, but it's just a plan change at the top. Or right. It says, I forget what it's at the top, but basically saying that the. the uh, it it just says it changes plan. Progress, so, it's drop, right? so it's still publicly visible, everyone sees it. So you mean actual private drafts? Well, so that's what Garrett has. No, well, I don't, I don't find the private aspect very useful. It's, it's, it's not. not it's also not secure. If, if you yeah, want a private, private. That's the thing. If you want a private draft and have yeah, local commits. But it's useful to have the idea of that. Yeah, so that's the idea. But yeah, essentially the concept of drafts is planned changes. Um, you can put your patch up and then essentially just say, right at the very beginning, I have changes planned. Take a look, but it's not, a, it's not final. Um, so, I guess what I'll do now is I'll switch over to my screen. You are already in your screen. Yeah, but does it follow, I don't know how this works, does this follow the uh, the voice of which computer is talking, I assume? No, yeah. oh, whatever, whatever, whatever like, mic. Whichever, whichever mic is, is actually. It's just like this one, I think I'm looking at whatever. It's delayed. Oh, it's showing your video. Oh, it's showing your video. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, that's the thing. So I'll switch this, and then. Yeah, to share your screen. Yeah. Desktop, great. All right. So, um, yeah. So uh, we had our uh, our ticket here. Uh, our sorry, our, our revision. Now, if I refresh, refresh this, you see it's closed. Um, and the history here shows that um, it was closed by this commit. Um, I, I Rowan landed it, and so it shows him as the author. So we can click on this, and this takes us to the actual commit in the repository that shows uh, all the information about how this happened. Hold on. If you land it, it shows you it is the author. Whoever lands it. Is that the same right. That's very odd. Oh, no, sorry. Whoever, uh, I hijacked whoever, it, so that's yeah, why. I, uh, whoever was the last author of the revision yeah. is okay. uh, considered the author, not okay. whoever landed it. OK. So, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. I just don't want every single thing to be authored by Jenkins Bot in the future. No, because what you'll see here is you'll see who authored it, who committed it, and who pushed it. Okay. Three uh, independent things. Cool. Um, That's all me in this case. Yeah, in this case, like it could have been uh, me as the author, you as the committer, and then Jenkins Bot as the yeah. uh, pusher. Uh, um, is it saying that just because you had it associated with the name, 
What you, I'm sorry, what was the question? I, I know with the manifest task, like T would have a link to differential. Right. So if you look at what's struck through up there, if you scroll back up, if you look at what's struck through, is actually the, the revision, not the task. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. It's just that the task number also happens to be the first four characters of the revision name. That's why it looks weird. All right. So the thing right. that's struck through is indicate that the revision has been merged. All right, I got it. So. Right. So I accidentally put the. Um, the task number in the commit, whereas it should have been in the summary, that would have automatically assigned it like this, manifest task. And I also believe, I mean, according to logs, uh, it looks like you can mark a, uh, a revision as a revision that, when solved, will close the task. Uh, as soon as it's landed, the task is, the task is automatically closed. That would be great. Uh, it looks like it's how it works. I, I've seen comments from other developers saying, as, as soon as this is landed, it will be... Oh. The, yeah, the task is considered complete, right. But this has to be optional, right? Because yes, we only have a situation that we have a commit that contributes to a task. It is optional. Then, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, actually, it's, it's like a project decision. You can do this per, per project. Oh, per, 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 per repository, sorry. There is a setting where you can say per repository, if the associated tasks get closed, it I, th I think there's also some magic wording you can do in the commit data if you type like closes T3 to T. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, what that's exactly what it is. Yeah. That's what I yeah, so if you just mention a number, it'll just create a link, and if you say closes, less than all. Correct. Um, you can always you can reopen, reopen it. it. So um, we'll head back to, so here's our commit, and we can see that this is the task it's associated with. But we can see that there's no strike through through it, so we know it's still open. Um, and now that we've actually completed this, we can actually close this task. Um, we'll just do, uh, in the normal scenario, when you put closes or solves yeah. whatever task, it would also apply the, um, the commit into the history here. So since I failed to do that, what I will actually do is uh, copy this part of the URL and say, change status. Uh, sorry, there. You'll see here, it automatically links up to that. You can do you curly braces as a theory. Curly braces? I know a lot of times you put like curly braces around like you know, D, D whatever or T whatever. Yeah. So people, like, expand it. Oh, I actually didn't know that. I've never done that before. No way. I don't know about that. Okay. Versus just D43, which only does this. Yeah. Interesting. Good to know. Uh, so yeah, this is closed. Uh, if we check out our project, we no longer have any open tasks, but we can view all. We'll do a search for everything here. Oh. Uh, all tasks. Mm. Edit query in project uh, street test. And there it is, our closed task. Um, and it's automatically also removed from this project's work board. So if we were to go back to here and check out the work board, there's nothing left in the backlog. Oh, uh, nice. It's automatically gone. So you can finish your session now. <laughs> yeah, that's it. However, uh, there's uh, one further step. Uh, I really don't like rolling, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into um, Diffusion, hop into this repository. I'm going to open up this commit, and I'm going to raise a concern. Don't like <laughs> so you can do pre-commit review or post-commit review? Post-commit yeah, review. So that's what happens here. Um, and now he's, he gets an email that notifies him. Um, and I become an auditor on this. Now, here it shows voluntary participant. That means I came in and manually audited this task, uh, this commit. Um, there is other ways to become an auditor, like through herald rules and such. Um, and so people would automatically be added. They wouldn't be voluntary participants. They would be 
uh, something else. I can't remember what it is. Um, but I changed my mind. I'll just accept this. Or maybe I'll just resign. I don't like to accept it. Problem solved. Uh, and now it's back to its normal old status. I was considered an auditor at some point, uh, but I resigned. Um, now you have the lazy icon. Now I have the lazy icon. <laughs> uh, and that's basically it. Um, ideally, this raising concern, the way uh, I would use it is if a commit broke something, go raise a concern with that commit. Um, and then when that uh, concern gets fixed, uh, go back and accept the commit or resign from it, but in your comment, put a link to the new commit uh, that fixed it or the differential, whatever, however way you fix it, uh, just pop a link in there and that will remove it from uh, creating a mess in your home page here. Can, can you click that code review project that you see in one of these tasks? Uh, just, just here. This one? Yes. Which one should I click on? No, code review? Project, yes. And now the work board. So, okay, so basically, uh, Ron, uh, Chris, others, they have been uh, creating tasks that, that are uh, related with code review, the tasks that we moved away from the other project, which is the day one, uh, because code review is not part of day one. Uh, what would be really, really useful is uh, keep tra testing, learning, uh, finding problems, and, and also like giving your feedback on these tasks. And it would be great if someone volunteers to start sort, sorting out, uh, like, like, for instance, before Daniel was asking, is this going to be a blocker? And right. then you get your opinion. OK, this sounds like a product owner or something like that. No, because I, 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 what I mean is that we really need to find our blockers, because those blockers, we need to report them upstream. And then sometimes upstream will say, oh, you're right. Uh, we have to work on this. And sometimes they will say, well, this is actually not how we think fabricators should work with. Up to you. I mean, do whatever with your instance. Just code, code whatever you want. I'm, so, I'm willing to take on responsibility, but only starting 35 days from now. Yeah, that's fine. I don't <laughs> think we're going to have a Godzilla very specific timeline. Yeah, it's an incredibly specific timeline. But I, yeah. Yeah. Yes. I have two more questions. One is, um, how about reverting changes? Um, how simple is it? Uh, sure. You would just do it through a normal git revert. No button. Okay. What's that? No button. <laughs> No, there is uh, there's no, there's yeah. Um, I, I've already filed a task about this. Right. I don't really care much about the button, but it's useful that Garrett would um, automatically cross-link. So mm -hmm. say, OK, this commit is reworking that change. In both well, directions. In both yeah. directions, yeah. it says it yeah. has been reverted. Yeah. Especially then, the latter. Yeah. That, that, that kind of information is kind of that's mm. Um, um, it, it, it's support for that is incomplete because it only does that if it was able to generate the revert If you have to revert conflicts and you have to generate it locally, then it doesn't yeah. have any prospects. Yeah, I guess that could be true. Yeah. Um, and the other question is um, I, on, on the home pages, I saw assigned tasks and things like that, but it's not clear to me how it would show basically the, the review um, dashboard like I have with Gary. So, Things that I've written that other set review, things that I should be reviewing. Yeah, you'll. The, 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 dashboard, the Garrett dashboard is pretty bad in the details. Which one? <laughs> Which one? <laughs> the old one? No, the personal one, the project one, they're like eight thirty five. The one that must be. Uh, uh, the, the, the one that, for instance, doesn't show me whether they are. What we'll do is. Um, quickly kind of create a diff here. Oh, yeah. Uh, our div. What's your username? Uh, it's Rally Art. Is it Rally? Yeah, it's a factory. Um. Yeah, so now we should have, let's see, this here one go. right here. So if you go back to that uh, overview real quick, if you go back one. No, no, no. Yeah, you go back to the save. There you go. 
So there's, if you scroll to the top, there's blocking others, action required, and waiting on others. I don't know exactly what those categories are, but it seems like it's trying to be useful. Um, yeah, and this is just like the general differential view. Um, there is also a way to have these appear in your home page. Um, so you could do that. I believe in Rowan's case, he would actually be, um, it would show up in his uh, home page right now right. because you're wait it's waiting on you. Mm -hmm. So that would show up at the top. Um, can you commandeer this by any chance? Uh, oh, I just put my laptop away. Oh, okay. <laughs> but you can put uh, something I can. Yeah, yeah, just T44 and then commandeer it. Well, why don't you um, raise concerns first because then it'll show up in his action required thing. Well, I, I want to um, so show I what it looks like in the home page. Just come in here, yeah. Come in? Come in here. Go to the bottom. Yeah. Um, then yeah. Instead of comments, uh, choose come in here. Oh, yeah. Okay. Good. All right. Done. Cool. So now he's there, and I'm a reviewer here. Um, oh, and it shows up here as one review blocking others. So now I know that I need to get involved with this. Um, and if you scroll down, are you sure? You yep. Can... Revisions waiting on you. So this is your home page. Normally it's this size, so you can actually see stuff. <laughs> but um, <laughs> in this case, uh, you're well aware that something's happening. and. Um, by doing request changes, we can go back and see that that number is no longer there because it's not waiting on me. And it's gone from here. So until he actually does something with it, it doesn't show up. So now I know that it's waiting on this person, not on me anymore. Um, and that's the difference between blocking others, action required, and waiting on others. So for him, it'll not be action required. Can Correct. So basically, mm -hmm. I'm reviewing your patch. Yeah. And I have I already commented on it, and then I want input from someone else. You can and go into comments. this revision, and there's multiple ways of doing it. But let's say uh, I wanted S page to get involved with S page. What do you? Um, or you could, this would automatically add him as a um, CC, but perhaps you just want to add an additional reviewer entirely. So we could just put S page. What's the difference? It's like star versus. Yeah, you would appear as a CC, which basically means you would get emails about it. Um, as a reviewer, it would appear in your home page and in your differential view as you appearing as a blocker on this because it needs to be reviewed. Um, so that's the difference. Um, now, in this case, I'm not going to do this. I'm just going to leave it as is. Um, and we've decided we don't want this. So I could resign as a viewer, but instead what I'll do is I'll commandeer this. And then finally I will abandon this revision entirely. Boom, now it's gone. Um, but you can always reclaim it. But we won't. <laughs> so that's essentially how it looks here in that uh, scenario. Um, any questions? Yeah, I have a question. Um, why should we have this Gary start to do a lot of. So we ask for people to review. When people can either plus one or plus two. So plus one is merely, yes, code is fine. On plus two is, I approve the change line. Right. <laughs> Will it be possible in Fabricator to add a second look to the, um, a second timeline? There kind of is right now, those tokens. It's weird. I, I think it's just like an interim version right now. Um, but we could always create an extension that essentially um, <coughs> like gives us that ability. Uh, well, saying I, I like I, I like this I think it's good or I, I but I so can't actually approve. Right now, you have two levels of feedback. I mean, first level of feedback, people focus on code, and then you will have to ask approval from 
seeing your team, for example. Right. I think the plus. So the plus one is just basically kind of like a, a weird visual cue that says, okay, this guy's taking a look at this. But you could always just comment and say whatever you have to say. Um, typically, the way we I would do it is that I would write a comment that says, yeah, I've looked at all this stuff, um, but someone else needs to actually approve those changes. Um, I find that a bit u more useful than just the plus one because uh, it forces you to actually get involved actively and give an explanation of what you actually did instead of just saying, yeah, I'm plus one in this. Um, because you're not required to actually put a uh, comment with your plus one. Uh, I prefer this, but uh, I, other people may disagree. It's the same model on GitHub as well. That's been working very well. It's just observed the same thing where you it, it makes it less of a democracy with like any kind of person just pushing to actually value something. Right. Okay. Uh, any other questions, concerns? Arousals. <laughs> I have another one. Mm -hmm. Do you know if we, if Fabricator has a way to push events, all events happening? And whenever someone does a command, whenever a default arrives, it's possible to stream yes. those events? Um, the, uh, are you talking about streaming them outside of Fabricator, correct? Yeah. Yeah, so Fabricator has a uh, event system. So you can write a bot in PHP, basically, uh, that sends whatever you want anywhere. Um, What's that? <laughs> well, yeah, since Fabricator is written in PHP, I would highly advise that you do it in PHP. Um, uh, but you don't have to, I guess. Um, I'm not aware of the full specifics. I've only briefly worked with the uh, event binding in Fabricator. But um, you could, we could easily set up a bot that kind of sends whatever information we need to IRC or uh, more specific details uh, by whatever other means that we actually need. So there are actually some code that will be communicated possible. Yes. Mm -hmm. We don't have to write it from scratch. What do you mean? Well, the the, the IRC kind of event. Yeah, uh, all events. Send it to CNN. Actually, in your age, when there's something happening in your age, whatever actions, yeah. like if patch is merging, someone has a comment. Your age has a very nice comment, which is meaning it's stream events. Yeah. And then she's some formatted events. And what we do is that we have a Python demon named Zool which is sent for all those events. Yeah. When it does some kind of decision, it just basically logs it. Set them kind of changing jobs, and it report back. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's so totally doable. If you wanted to use Zool, to keep choosing Zool on Jenkins, right. <coughs> we'll, have, we'll need a way to consume all events from public at online. So if you guys that is someone at the chain or something like that. Uh, I believe it's doable. Um, I know for a fact that there is an event system that you can bind to, um, and I'm pretty sure it does what you're asking. Uh, but I haven't worked with it specifically in depth, so it's definitely something for us to look into. Cool. Okay. With 12 minutes to spare. Yeah. Um, the next session actually is back to back with this one. It starts at three, so we should probably just wrap up and give people uh, time to. Yeah. Right. Actually walk upstairs and do things and go drink on that. Great. All right. Well, yeah. thanks for coming, guys. Thank you.